Well, activists who want to defund the police apparently don't have former President Barack Obama on their side. He told a Snapchat podcast that the rallying cry is hurting more than helping. I guess you can use a snappy slogan like defund the police, but you know you've lost a big audience the minute you say it, which makes it a lot less likely that you're actually going to get the changes you want done. All right, let's bring in our political analyst, John Keller, now. And John, is he right that a simple slogan can have that big of an impact? David, he's absolutely right. Uh, Republicans seized on that slogan after it emerged last summer in the wake of the uh, street protests. And uh, they used it to help them win a number of Senate and House races. One poll showed that when a focus group was showed a, uh, uh, a defund the police Trump attack ad uh, capitalizing on that slogan, it shaved eight points off Joe Biden's approval rating among Democrats. That's just a, an amazing shift. And that is why you won't find any language about defunding the police in the police reform bill approved by the legislature this week that measure is controversial enough as it is without having to carry that baggage. Democratic leaders in the House and Senate knew it, and that's why they kept any talk of defunding the police well away from what they were doing, David. Yeah, John, over the summer when I went to one of these events to cover it, I was told over and over again that defund the police was really a term for reforming the way money was spent on police budgets and that it wasn't about completely getting rid of police in any way. So it was really turned into a political football and in some ways a weaponized, which I think both parties do at this point. Is there a way to sort of stop that weaponizing of poorly chosen words? You would hope so, and if there is, I suggest whoever has the answer to immediately uh, call Washington, D.C., because uh, the situation is really toxic down there. And here's a pressing current example of that, David. I'm going to show you some video of a press conference yesterday uh, down in Washington held by a bipartisan group of representatives and senators, including former Governor Mitt Romney, offering, get this, a compromise plan to get $900 billion worth of emergency relief funds out the door. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? But at least as far as Mitch McConnell, the Senate leader, is concerned, it's dead on arrival. Why? Because it includes $160 billion in funds for state and local Democrats, which Republicans have been deriding all year as a, quote, bailout for wasteful Democratic politicians. And it also includes a temporary moratorium on some virus-related lawsuits against businesses, which which Democrats have been criticizing as a bailout for wealthy business owners. So, you know, nobody likes the idea of bailouts for elites, do they? And uh, this is an, uh, an example of how they're gridlocked and how nothing's getting done to help people who are suffering. It's an intolerable situation. Yeah, meantime, businesses are saying, hey, somebody help us, please. John Keller, thank you so much and for your insight, too, as always. Yeah. We appreciate it. Lisa, over to you. David, John.